In this tiny tutorial, I'm going to show you how to control one of these DC motors using a transistor. So this transistor specifically that I'm going to use is called the 2N3904, and I basically get that right from, a little hard to see, but there's some writing on the, t on the front of that transistor. If you were to go to Google, and, or your favorite search engine, and just search for 2N3904 data sheet, you would get something like this. This one's from On Semiconductor, but there's a few other manufacturers that make this guy as well. And what's handy about the data sheet is it shows that if I hold this up just like it shows in the picture, um, you can see this is pin 1, 2, 3, and pin 1 represents the, the emitter. Um, 2 represents the base, 3 represents the collector. Now I'm going to, to flip it around. Since this is 3, I'm going to flip it around so that it matches both my schematic and the, the one here on the data sheet. And I'm going to plug it right into my breadboard because we're going to use it just like so. Now I've got power off when I'm building circuits. But let's go ahead and see what a see what a circuit for this is going to look like. So the way that a transistor works is that by allowing a small amount of current to flow from the base to the emitter, so this is this is current we control by putting current through the base from the base to the emitter, a much larger amount of current will flow from the collector to the emitter. So a transistor in a in a way really is an is a current amplifier. So small amount of current here means large amount of current here. Now in order to get that current to go through my motor, that means that I have to you know, get it from power source. So we'll set this to my plus 5 volts. And we'll run this one into the motor. And the other pin of the motor will connect to ground. Now motors when you give them current, they spin. If you spin a motor, that also means they, they produce current or electricity at the other side. So motors are, are basically generators too. That's a little bit problematic when you're hooking them into a to circuit, especially a low voltage circuit with a, with a microcontroller, because if, if you're spinning this thing around, like you're sending it current, you're spinning it around, and then you stop sending it current, well, the motor keeps spinning a little bit. And that is actually going to generate electricity and push it back into your circuit. That's called back EMF, and it can actually, if you're not careful, if you don't do things to your circuit to, to protect it, can actually do damage to things, to sensitive components um, like microcontrollers. The propeller is pretty robust. Um, it'll take a pretty good beating, but you know, why, why, why give it the beating if we don't have to? So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put a capacitor across the motor's terminals. Um, if you ever actually rip one of these motors out of like a, a child's toy or something, you'll sometimes see they've, they've gone and they've soldered um, like a small capacitor across the leads. That's pretty common to see in, in things that I've disassembled over the years. Um, and, and it's for this reason. This particular one is a 0 0.01 farad and it's, and it's available in a lot of our electronics kits. And then I'm just going to use the alligator clips to hold, to, to make contact with the motor and to hold the capacitor's leads on there as well. And so now that's firmly attached. I'm just going to use a roll of tape here to hold the motor so we can let it spin and see what it's doing. Now let's finish the rest of the circuit. The way we're going to control the transistor, we'll just use one of our pins. We'll pick pin 8 here. So P8, and we'll run that through a small resistor. This will also help protect the microcontroller from some of that back EMF. So we'll take the resistor, connect it to P8, And that's, that's our circuit. Relatively simple, just a, a few parts, and the transistor is going to be our switch that then allows a small current from the microcontroller to control a much larger current that we use to drive the motor. So now that that's in place, let's go back to our Blockly program. And 
All we have to do to get current here is we can set this high. So we could use the same kind of code that we would use to blink an LED, this time to turn the motor on and off. But since we're here, let's do something a little fancier. We're going to go under Analog Pulses, and I'm going to choose PWM. The reason I'm choosing this is PWM, what that means is that it, it turns this pin on and off super fast. If it's set to pin 8 and its duty cycle is 50%, that means that it's on half of the time and off half of the time, but it happens so fast, it's kind of like setting this pin to half. Um, but since we're going to demonstrate just the on-off first, we'll set that one to 100. We'll do a pause for one second. We'll set, then we'll set the PWM to zero, so that's effectively off. And wait one more second, this will loop. So this basically will make the motor go on, off, on, off. So we'll turn that on. We'll load this to our, to our board. Oh, there we go. So on for a second, off, on, off. Now you'll notice that this, I put my finger here, it's almost like the motor's too weak to even turn it, so it doesn't seem like, like that's very useful. And the reason for that is because I'm currently using a 220 ohm resistor here. And remember, some current here equals more current here. Well, a little more current here equals more current here. This is an amplifier. And since I don't really have like super small resistors, well, let's just replace it with a wire. Let's get rid of the resistor altogether. <clears throat> this, however, is a little more dangerous because what it means is now the motor can actually, you know, that back EMF can get right to the microcontroller because I've basically straight wired it through. So if you're going to go this far, there's one other thing you should do, and that is to use a diode. And what a diode, remember the diode is something that only lets electricity through in one direction. And so this is going to short circuit that back EMF and prevent it from making its way through the rest of the circuit. Now, if you don't have a diode, like this is a little switching diode like I do, then you could use an LED. Remember that the, the line here represents the, the negative lead of the LED. So we're actually connecting the positive lead to ground and the negative lead um, to the other side of the motor. And this will provide, you know, that, that additional piece of protection that you really should have in order to um, prevent, you know, the, the remaining momentum of the motor from kicking electricity back into your circuit. Now, remember, my finger could stop it. So now when I turn this back on and load this code again, now this motor's got quite a bit more oomph. In fact, it's kind of pushing itself around here. And, th and that's better. That's, that's more like what we expect or what we want. So now that we're here, now that we've got the circuit working, now we can experiment with things like, um, now instead of turning it completely off, let's say I set it to 25%. Now hopefully you can hear this with my microphone. And you could monkey around with things like this. So maybe we only want to go half speed and then off. So that's the advantage of the PWM. It allows us to do things like control the speed of the motor. You could use an input or some part of your program to, to speed the motor up and slow it down, but that's the advantage of using PWM in addition to using a transistor in your circuit to control a DC motor.